Hello, my name is George, and I wanted to tell you my story about the worst boss that I've ever had. It was a few years ago, and I worked for a software engineering firm that specialized in financial software for some pretty major banks. We all had to sign NDAs to ensure that we wouldn't sell company or client secrets to competitor firms. It was a pretty stressful job sometimes, but I really enjoyed it. It was always challenging, and my team was made up of some of the greatest people I had ever met. Our team leader was named Scott, and he was very easygoing. He was one of those bosses that didn't care what you did, so long as your work was completed on time and was done right. If you took a few extra minutes at lunch or came in a few minutes late, it didn't matter to Scott, so long as you did your job and deadlines were met. It was the kind of managerial style that I could really get behind. It made for a happy team, and the happier we were, the more successful that we were. Unfortunately, one day Scott came in and broke some bad news to the team. With tears in his eyes, he told us that he had received some terrible news and that he had been diagnosed with cancer, and that he needed to take a leave of absence to focus on beating his disease. The entire team was floored and couldn't believe what we were hearing. Although all of us understood that he needed to do what was best for him, and so we threw him a massive send-off party. One week later, the manager of our department, Megan, came to our team and announced that a new team leader would be transferred from another team that had been disbanded due to cutbacks. When she mentioned this, most of us looked at each other and felt a bit uneasy. She then introduced us to Gary, who was smiling from ear to ear. To me, his smile felt almost feral. It felt like how a wolf would stare at a flock of sheep, and it was more than a little bit unsettling. Although our first impressions weren't great, for the first couple of weeks, Gary did make a point of trying to befriend the whole team. He was very curious about everyone's lives and asked lots of personal questions. For a bunch of programmers, this felt a bit uncomfortable but he assured us that it was just so that he could get to know us. At the end of the fourth week, though, is when problems began to happen. Sue and Helen typically would come in a bit late on Mondays since they had to see their kids off to school. And so far, this had never been a problem. But Gary didn't see this as such. They came in 10 minutes late, and Gary confronted them and told them that he would be forced to write them up if it happened again. Annoyed, they came and told me what had happened. Can you believe Gary? He had the nerve to threaten to write us up for being only 10 minutes late. It was rather odd, considering what we were used to, but I knew that there would be differences between Scott and Gary. I decided that I would take lead and have a word with Gary, though. Maybe if I explained what the group dynamic was, then he would understand and have a better idea of how he could fit in with the team. Let me have a word with him. Maybe I can help make him understand that we need a bit more leniency sometimes. The two women nodded and shrugged, not entirely convinced that I would be successful. I then headed over to Gary's office. He greeted me with that wolfish smile which made my skin crawl. Hey there, Gary. I just spoke with Sue and Helen and they told me that you had an issue with them being a little late. I know what the rules are, but our former team leader usually was pretty lenient on such things. Well, to be honest, George, I don't care what your former team leader did, but I'm a stickler for the rules, and if people don't follow them, then yes, there will be consequences. Do I make myself clear? Yes, that's clear. I just was trying to help you understand what our team is usually like. George, I don't care what Scott did. If you're late or you mess up, I won't stand for it. Now get out and get to work. I nodded and slowly backed out of his office. Sadly, that short conversation put a target on my back. One week later, I was called into Megan's office. Gary was there, and as soon as I sat down, Gary began to yell at me. Apparently, the software we had just sold to a client was full of bugs, and Gary was blaming me for them. Unfortunately, I didn't know what he was talking about, and I was too nervous to say anything. Instead, I just promised that I would look into the issue. Later, I checked the software and found that someone had deleted lines of code which made it buggy. Whoever had done it had been sloppy, but I couldn't figure out who it was I suspected that it had been Gary, although I didn't understand why he would do such a thing. I cleaned up the software and sent the fixed copy to Gary for him to review and pass along to the client. The next day, I was once again called into Megan's office, and once again Gary was there and ready to yell at me. He claimed that not only did the software that I sent him contain the same bugs as before, 
but I had made him look bad because he told the client that it was fixed. I was dumbfounded. I knew that I had fixed the bugs, but he was telling me the exact opposite. George, you've been a good employee for years, but these kinds of mistakes will cost the company millions. I don't want to discipline you, but one more mistake like this and I will be forced to. Annoyed, I went back to my desk and got to work on the software and found that the bugs I had fixed were back. So I fixed them again and then sent a copy to Gary, telling him that the software was good to go. All I could do now was hope that there weren't any more issues. But sure enough, the next day I was once again called into Megan's office. Well, once again you failed to fix the bugs and we lost the account. This was the last straw. As soon as he said that, two security guards came in and escorted me out of the building. I couldn't believe it, but Megan fired me, and I knew that Gary had something to do with it. I couldn't believe that he could be so petty. That night when I got home, I started looking for jobs online and sent out as many resumes as I could. Once I had done that, I decided to use my computer skills to log into the office computers, and I managed to hack into Gary's computer. After some digging, I found evidence that he had altered the software and had passed along a damaged copy of it to the client. I wasn't sure why until I looked through his emails and saw that he was speaking with one of our competitors and had made a deal to give them the software in exchange for a juicy job and salary. Seeing this, I forwarded all of these emails to Megan. I didn't know if she would do anything about it, but I knew that it would make me feel better. If nothing else, it explained why he had targeted me since it would allow him to steal the software and he could use me as a scapegoat. A week later, I received a call from Scott of all people. It turned out that he had beaten his cancer and had come back to work to find that I had been fired. Angry, he did some investigative work of his own and along with Megan, they were able to figure out what Gary had done. Because of the nature of what he did, it was considered corporate espionage which not only meant that Gary had been fired, but he had been arrested and could face up to five years in prison. Scott apologized for what happened and begged me to come back to work and even promised a nice raise and the position of team leader. After finding out what Scott did, the company gave both Megan and Scott promotions and as such, the position of team leader opened up. I of course accepted the offer and vowed that I would take Scott's lead and be a manger like he had always been. Since then, my team has become one of the most successful teams in the company. Thanks for watching, please. Like the video for the algorithm.